interested in public speaking. It was, you know, as I was doing my master's in at UCF, the University of Central Florida, they needed instructors that would teach public speaking because in the state of Florida, it's a required class that every student needs to take in order to graduate. So it was one of those classes that um, you couldn't graduate if you don't if you don't pass that class. So I had the the younger ones, the freshmen, and I also had a lot of seniors, people that they've been trying to to graduate without taking um, public speaking. But um, so they needed instructors, and then I was offered a position, and um, and I I really fell in love with it, teaching that class because it teaches you so much about um, your personality. You have to overcome the fear of public speaking. And it's also like you're almost acting on stage when you're delivering a speech. So what I love to, um, I love to share with my students is the aspect of uh, gaining or, or getting, being really confident before giving the speech. And prepare your mind to forget about all the fear and just focus on yourself and engaging with the audience. So I like to, you know, tell them about a few little secrets uh, on how to become a really good public speaker just by, by learning and following a few simple rules. <laughs> right. So what are those uh, few simple rules? Because... I think one of the greatest fear in our society is people, a lot of people don't want to speak in public. Mm -hmm. Um, Let's uh, go in detail, share with us what are the secrets of public speaking? What are those secrets you could uh, share with our radio listeners? Mm -hmm. So... You know, kind of like continuing a little bit from a few things that I share with you on the first part. And let me do a quick summarize the, what we talked about. So the first one I talk about, know your topic and get organized, practice, visualize yourself giving the speech and do some d- deep breathing. Um, then focus on your material. So another little, you know, secret and it's not really a secret but to have flashcards if you need to and I even use them when I have to give a public uh, speech I have I usually have flashcards with me not with full sentences in them but I do have some words keywords to remind me in case I forget or to follow a certain specific order that will help me to stay organized and on track. 
so you don't want to write sentences because you will start reading and you will lose connection with the audience. But if you if you have a, a word, then it reminds you of uh, of your points, but you're still connecting with the audience. Right. So, and sometimes, you know, if you happen to forget something and you need to take a moment, or whatever it is that it happens that it wasn't planned, you know, for example, you forget about something on the speech and you need to take a moment and, and you make it silent. And take that moment to your advantage and make it work for you as opposed to against you. It's like I said before, you're like an actor when you're giving a speech, so you can act it out and make, for example, a moment of silence um, as a moment of expectation in your speech. Nobody knew that you may you forgot if you don't show it. <laughs> they might think that that's part of your speech. A moment your audience needs to process the information you're giving them as opposed to a moment that you forgot what to say. So making every moment work for you. So the other things is like making eye contact with the audience. But actually, if you look over the audience, they wouldn't know that you're not looking at them. You know, because looking at somebody in the eye when you're giving a speech, it could be intimidating. But if you look over the audience, so you look, basically are looking over their head towards the back of the room, then they will think you're making eye contact with them. You're engaging with them, but you're not directly making eye contact. <laughs> so it kind of helps if you have anxiety in a, when delivering a speech. It might help my help to stay connected with your audience. So the other thing is use gestures to get the audience interest and, um, and use your nonverbal communication, like use your body movement to your advantage. You can use specific expressions to make a point and to, again, engage with the audience. The more comfortable, the more you practice, the more comfortable you're going to, you're going to feel. And uh, you want your audience attention, and you want your audience to grow with you and connect with your speech. So the more comfortable you feel, then you can start talking to the audience and making certain gestures towards the audience and making more eye contact to certain people in the audience to make sure that you're talking to them, directly to them, and you're reaching them, even though they are on the other side. So those are a few of, uh, of the secrets. I don't know how much time we have. <laughs> <laughs> I can share more. <laughs> pretty, pretty interesting, you know. I, um, I love public speaking. And um, Victoria... Let's talk about um, what is um, out there. There's a lot of great speakers. What What is one of your favorite speakers around the world? Some presidents are very good at it. Some pastors, some athletes, some famous people. But you as a teacher, you I'm sure you have two or three or four names in you, in your reservoir, people you you will say, oh, that speech is one ready, I love it. Which one is that one? Can you share that with us? So I have a few favorite speakers and speeches. One of my favorites that I always share with my students, of, of, like the first speech that, that I would share with them, is the I Have a Dream by Martin Luther King. Martin Luther. I get, yeah, I get goosebumps every time I hear that speech. It has so much power and so much connection. And I think, you know, it's just amazing. That That's one of my favorites. I also love Maya Angelou. She, she has a way of getting deep inside of you. She has a power in her voice that reaches people at a deeper level. So she has, like, a depth in her knowledge that opens your mind. I love listening to her, and I love her poems. 
And I feel like every time I listen to her, I'm just like in awe. You know, I'm like, like there's no words for me to to, to say. <laughs> it's just like listening and learning and taking as much as I can from from all the knowledge that she that she had and all the writing that she did is, is quite impressive. Let me see. Another one of my favorites is um, Michelle Obama. And I like how she projects to the audience. And with her wonderful storytelling skills, it seems to be talking to every person in the audience individually. One of her quotes in her book, Becoming, um, she says, right. don't ever make a decision based on fear. Make decisions based on hope and possibility. So what I love about her is that when you listen to the speech to, to her, um, it's like she's almost talking to you directly. Even she's speaking to thousands of people. And um, she can really ha has that skill that she can make a, a connection and make you feel special, even though you're in the audience. So that's quite nice um, from, from, from Michelle Obama. And um, let me see. Another one is um, Oprah. <laughs> she is very kind and very determined. She tells you what is right and what is fair. And she has such a personality. Um, one of the speeches that I like, it was from her on uh, 2015, at the Power of Women. I believe it was a luncheon. And um, she talks about personality needs to serve the soul, how to use the energy of your personality to serve with love and kindness, how you use what you have been given to empower other people, to impact their souls. So that speech was quite interesting because, you see, the, I found that the best speakers are the ones that touch the heart with love and conviction, with knowledge and determination. Mm -hmm. So basically the ones that tell their story with confidence and love and share their hardships to connect with the audience. Right. When given a speech, the one thing we have is the power of using our voice to engage, to connect, to reach other people, other souls. And that's what I like about speakers, when they can really connect with you at a deeper level, not just because it makes sense or because they are very knowledgeable on a subject, but also because they can engage and you can feel the kindness inside the words, inside that speech. Right. Very interesting. Now, if I'm standing on a stage, I see some people use a lectern or podium, and uh, I see some people walk three step to the left, three to the right, three forward, three back. What's the proper technique about speaking in public exactly? What's a speaker up there, what what they need to do, what would you advise for that person to do, for example, one of your students? So if somebody's on stage? If somebody on, on stage, some people walk, some people stay on, use the lectern, some people use their hand, some oh, okay. people... Uh, so I just wanted to get from you as a professor of public speaker, speaking, um, what are the gestures allowed on stage? What should you do or what you shouldn't do? Okay. So when you're on stage, of course, all eyes are on you. So some people feel more comfortable using... Um, they don't like to use anything in front of them. Mm -hmm. I personally like to have a podium or something in front of me where I can put my cards. 
Right. So right. that's my favorite and 